out real loud. There was a lot of shots. Gunshot wounds to his arm, hip, and head. I literally had blood just caked over my face. Pastor Tim Remington was shot in the back as he walked to his car. I was in, in trouble at that point. That's where God had to intervene. It was a mystery why someone would gun down Pastor Tim Remington in his church parking lot in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. But now it was up to paramedics to keep him alive. Paramedic Eric Paul found the pastor bleeding from multiple gunshot wounds in a collapsed right lung. He inserted a temporary chest tube to help him breathe. We fixed the one immediate problem we could fix in the field, um, started giving him some fluid boluses, and then at that point, it's time to go to the hospital. Tim was taken to Kootenai Health Emergency Room. His wife, Cindy, arrived, and they had a brief moment together. I said, I, I love you. He said, I love you. And then he, it was so hard for him to breathe, so hard for him to speak. Three times he said to tell the children that, that he loves them. I said, do you know what happened? And he shook his head, and I said, I said, well, you got shot. Remington was shot six times. One of the bullets shattered his shoulder. Another lodged into the soft tissue of his skull just centimeters away from killing him. He was also hit in the arm and pelvis. Attending surgeon Dr. Bob Holman said amazingly no vital organs were damaged, but one injury was life-threatening. Major concern was the amount of blood he's losing, which is primarily from the pelvic injuries. You fracture pelvic bones and you can just bleed to death from a pelvic fracture. Dr. Holman and his team took Tim into surgery immediately to stop the bleeding. The only promise they made was that they would do their best. But as Cindy prayed, she knew that Tim's life was in God's hands. Honest and truly, you find out there is a peace that passes all understanding, and, and his name is Jesus. And that really is what happened. Everything went very still. I really wasn't afraid. I didn't feel like Tim was going to die. After eight hours of surgery, Tim woke up in the ICU. When I knew that I was alive, then I knew that God was definitely in it and there was a reason. And I didn't know the reason, but I knew that he was in control of it at that point. In the meantime, the gunman had been identified as Kyle Odom. Two days after the shooting, he was arrested for throwing papers over the White House fence, accusing Pastor Remington as the head of an alien conspiracy. But there would be no public outcry for justice. Instead, Tim's church and the city of Coeur d'Alene held a prayer vigil for Tim and the shooter that sent out a message of love and forgiveness. They all said and communicated what I wanted them to say. We do not hate Kyle at all. We need to love him and uh, we need to bring him to Jesus. But there were more battles to fight. A week later, doctors discovered a bullet had left a small hole in Tim's colon and rushed him into surgery. Dr. Timothy Quinn was the surgeon on call that day. The colon has a, all kinds of bacteria in there, and, and so it was leaking, and it gave, it gave him peritonitis. I didn't feel like it was safe to repair it and leave it alone so that we had to bring, exteriorize it as a colostomy to, so it could get the infection under control. So that's a big deal. Cindy, their children, and their church family knew what needed to be done. We asked the Lord to rebuke the enemy on Tim's behalf, and, and you know he did, and he kept doing that. The Lord kept protecting him, kept providing what was needed. After two weeks, the infection cleared and doctors reversed the colostomy. Tim was discharged, but not long after he got home, he suffered a stroke. The Remington family continued to trust God. I didn't have to keep saying, Jesus be with us, Jesus be with us. He was with us. And that constant faithfulness of the Lord and the fact that He loves us all the time, no matter what. Hard days, no matter how big the challenge is, and that was a big one, no matter how big it is, He loves us and He's with us. Tim recovered from his stroke and just three months after the shooting was back in the pulpit. People just wrote us and they brought in baskets and baskets of letters that were coming in of people that were praying for us and people getting saved locally right here and people around the world just getting saved over it of what God was doing even in my life. 
When I said that I had no animosity against the shooter, that caused a great healing in other people's lives for some reason. The Lord just allowed that to happen. You could call it a miracle. Uh, some people would use that term, and I, I wouldn't argue with that. One of the fortunate things is that every time it seems the guy shot him, he hit a big bone. And that was basically his shield against injury to internal organs. Even as his assailant Kyle Odom serves his time, Tim writes to him often, offering forgiveness and sharing the saving power of Jesus Christ. God preserved me, he saved me, and it was a miracle, absolute miracle.